Welcome to Covenant United Methodist Church. Thank you so much for tuning in that we may be in worship together. Come, let us worship the living God.
Let us go to our God together in prayer. O holy God, God who is thrice holy, we praise you for your very being. It is because you are that we can be. You have created us. God, you are the one who sustains us. And God, we know that our redemption is in you. God, we praise you for the ways you have been at work in our lives, whether these last few days or are from before we were even born. You have been our God, and we praise you, Lord. You have shown us love. You have shown us the way of Jesus. And we are thankful, God, that you have put us as a part of this covenant church family, an opportunity to grow as your disciples, to love you and to love our neighbor. We thank you that you've called us and sent us. We thank you, God, that you are with us always. God, we come to you, the one who is love, the one who cares for each like a father for his own. And we pray for those on our prayer list. We pray for those, Lord, in our country and world who are in a particularly difficult time. Oh God, would you heal them? Oh God, may they feel your presence. Oh God, we thank you that you are in the places that are often forgotten, the places that seem left behind, the places of despair. Your presence is there, and we thank you, God. We look forward to praises that we can shout of what you have done in each of these situations. God, we come before you and we pray you continue to bless all of our ministries and a time of adaptation and change. God, we know that you are present in all of us. And so we thank you, God, for the ways that you are inviting us to love one another in new ways and for us to worship together in new ways. God, we pray you'd bless all of our efforts. We pray you'd bless all of the ways that we seek to just be a faithful church. And God, we thank you that you've called us to be disciples of Jesus Christ. We pray the prayer that he's taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
here. You are hearing my voice and not seeing my face this morning because I am going to show you some video of a wonderful mission that our church does, and that is the food pantry. I love to talk about the food pantry. I love to help the food pantry. And this morning, we are going to see some ways that our church helps others in our neighborhood and in our city. And I want to show you some video of how it works, who works there, and I want you to be thinking this week about how you can help and how you can show the love of God in your neighborhood as well. So let's enjoy. Good morning, Covenant. Scripture for today is from Paul's letter to the people of Galatia and is so relevant to our times. It's to the folks he ministered to on his second journey and goes to the heart of being a Christian to treat your fellow people, women and men, with respect and kindness. You know, do unto others. My father gave me a lot of really great advice that I figured out later because I knew everything then. But among the very best it was it's hard to be a Christian and in a discussion with someone who you totally disagree with. But he always said, find something right with what the other person is saying. I struggle with that, but I really am trying. Still. So, Galatians 5, chapter 5, verses 14 and 15. For the entire law is fulfilled in keeping this one command. Love your neighbor as yourself. If you bite and devour each other, watch out, or you will be destroyed by each other. This is the word of God for the people of God. Good morning, or good afternoon, depending on when you're visiting this. Or, and we'll thank you for visiting our church. Thank you for visiting Covenant United Methodist. And I'm really honored today to be speaking uh, kind of in a place for our minister who is wonderfully doing a wedding away this weekend. And my sermon today is kind of has two parts. The first part is pretty simple. The second part is very challenging. The simple part starts out like this. It is not easy to be a Christian. Now you think about that for a second. Of course it's not easy to be a Christian. Everyone can be a Christian if you want to be, but living the life that Christ asks of us is a challenge. It's always a challenge. And in the verses that Charlie read for you a minute ago, I want to bring, I want to bring those up again just for a second, if you don't mind. I'm going to read from them. For the whole law is summed up in a single commandment, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. And you all know that one. That's, the, that's one of the verses that if people don't really memorize the Bible a lot, that's one of the verses that people know well. The second verse is really, really important to our time, and this is the one I want you to think about along with me. If, however, you bite and devour on another, take care that you are not consumed by another. And think about the way the world is today. When Christ was in front of Pontius Pilate, near the end of his life, Pilate asked him if he was the king of the Jews. It's a very famous moment. And, pa and Christ turns to Pilate and says, I'm not the king of Jews. This is my truth. This is the truth. I'm here for this purpose. And Pilate turns back to Christ and says, what is truth? Thereby saying, your truth, my truth, their truth, whosoever's truth. What is truth? 
Today we live in a world where truth is in flux. Regardless of who you are, you are living in a social media world where your truth by clicking on Facebook and saying you like this brings you more of it. Your truth by um, watching a particular channel on television, reading a particular book, talking to friends, you tend to associate with people that, you, that agree with your truth or that you find commonality with your truth. But that's not what Jesus asked us to do. What Jesus asked us to do is to get out among the people and to love everyone. And it is a real challenge to love someone who does not think or you perceive their truth to be quite different from yours and doesn't think perhaps in the same way that you do. And then we learn to love our truth. We learn to think of it as, as something that is our, well, I'm right. I've got to be right. You know, this is the way it is. Let me tell you, this is the way it is. You should believe me. And we all know people like that. We know people who bully others. We know people who intimidate others. We know who people who just shout out with others because they know their truth is true to them and you should just believe it because I'm saying it. But in the world that we live in right now, that's the challenge. It's a real challenge because everyone has a voice and a voice that's louder than perhaps we had in the past. And then you confound that with the fact that science is discovering as time goes on that when we observe something, it perhaps changes it. That we, the object is called, I'm going to look to be sure that I get this right, it is called the observation effect. So, for example, if, if I'm looking at particles in, micro, in a micro setting, if I look at them, they behave one way. If I don't look at them, they behave another way. Every mother in the world knows that's true. If you're looking at the kids, they behave one way. If you don't look at them, that's another way. But you never thought about it being a, kind of a universal principle. So all the things that we've assumed for years and years and years are facts, facts being literal facts, are, are being questioned. And I think all of you can think of examples in your own life where those facts, things that you thought were facts, are, are under a question. And then we have an issue with that. And that is where the second part of my sermon comes from. But before I go there, I just want you to think really, really hard about how hard it is to love other people. Did Christ choose to love people who looked like him? Does he ask us to, lo to love just people who think like us? Does he ask us to, look, to love people who live in our neighborhood? Does he ask us to love people who are of the same religious faith we are? Or does he ask us to love everyone? Well, the answer is he asks us to love everyone, and that is a huge challenge. And that's why being a Christian is not easy. So in the second part of my sermon today, I'd like to talk to you about a book that has been the basis of um, a lot of my own personal growth. It's a book that was written by a former um, Wesleyan minister, Reuben P. Job, and it's called Three Simple Rules. So this book is one that I would recommend to anyone. Uh, you don't have to be a Methodist, you don't have to be even a Christian, but I think it's a great book for Christians. The Three Simple Rules, I was honored to speak um, about a year ago on the second one, which is do good. The first rule is the one we're going to speak about, I'm going to speak about today, which is do no harm. The last one, which hopefully I'll get a chance to, to talk about at some point, is stay in love with God. It's a small book, and I want to thank Pastor Stella for turning me on to this about a year and a half ago. But in any event, do, do no harm. You all remember that phrase from uh, the Hippocratic Oath. And it's also in a lot of other things. In fact, my voice teacher, that's one of her primary uh, precepts is do no harm to someone's voice when she's teaching them to sing. Well, do no harm is a challenge, that, and it's, a, it's something I'd like you to take on. So let's suppose, as a Christian, we are given to love everyone. So we've got someone that we, we don't interact with comfortably, but we have to interact with them. We should, we should interact with them. Their perspective is totally different from ours. And you know it's always an uncomfortable confrontation. It could be an uncle at a Thanksgiving dinner. It could be someone that you work with. It could be anyone that you can imagine. 
So this is a change of mindset. This is just a change of, of attitude. And it's like, I want you to imagine, like all of us do these days, that you're in that Zoom box that you find yourself in. You're in the Zoom box, and you've got the mute button in front of you. And you're speaking to that person, and you're listening to them, and you know it's time to unmute and say something. And you know you need to unmute and say something, because your spirit is telling you, your soul is telling you, you're, 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 hopefully you're not getting angry, perhaps even though you are getting, getting angry. So what I'd like you to do is pause for a second and think, do no harm. What can I say in this situation that gets my point across or that moves the conversation forward or that teaches the point or the, the, the lesson that I want to learn but harms no one, especially the person that I'm interacting with? Now, that's a challenge. It's a discipline. It's also very freeing. If I'm not going to harm anyone, then I must always say the truth. I can't make up facts in the moment. If I'm not going to harm anyone, I'm not going to gossip. I'm not going to do anything in my speech that will bring that person into question. And when you do that, then you open up an opportunity. Hopefully the outcome from that can be very, very positive. It can be an agree to disagree. It can be perhaps even if you've listened to each other. And imagine when you listen to someone like they're a huge and then as you listen to them, they become smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller. Not in size, but once you understand their argument and their, their ideas, once you understand their ideas, then you own those ideas and you see their perspective. I didn't say you change their perspective. I say you see their perspective. And it allows a lot of growth to occur for you personally and hopefully with interacting with them. But you all have to think about doing no harm as you go through this. Once that harm aspect is out of it, then you listen to the person, you make your statement if you need to make a statement or choose to just listen. And hopefully coming out of that, you'll get positive outcomes, an agree to disagree, perhaps, or even the, something that's even better in this world. And it's something that we, we seldom get as, uh, see as positive these days. And that's the word is compromise. Compromise is not a negative word. In the world today, a lot of people think of compromise as a loss. But a collaborative compromise, notice I said collaborative compromise, and this is what we're dealing with here. A collaborative compromise is a win for everyone. And so that's the part that I'd like you to think about. I would hope that you would get this book and think through these lessons that I've given you today. Amen.
And when I come to die, give me Jesus. Give me Jesus. Give me Jesus. You can have all this world. Give.